Hi guys, it's Leslie of Leslie Writes It All with one last holiday painting tutorial for you. And as usual, I'll be starting with the supplies that we'll be using. Starting with this Aquafine watercolor palette from Dalla Rowney. I am showing you the travel size, but I'll be using the full size palette, which has the same colors. And for the paper, we'll be using Strathmore's 8x10 ready cut watercolor paper in uh, cold press. And our brushes are Princeton Round Velvet Touch in size 3 and size 8. So I'm just going to jump right in, but I do want you guys to get practice if you are unfamiliar with painting trees. I'm doing a very loose, whimsical style for these trees, and I'm keeping it in a very bright and uh, colorful rainbow um, ombre effect. It's going to go from, and, and I've explained this before, the easiest way to do rainbow is to just do it the way you learned it in grade school, which is in Roji Biv. So I'll be starting with my reds and my pinks, working down to oranges and yellows, and from there we're going to go green, blue, into purples. So that's the easiest way for me to remember, and it's the best way for your colors to look cohesive um, as you're transitioning. And this is kind of my Bob Ross moment where I get to show you guys how to paint happy little trees. Um, less detailed in a more loose style with watercolor. But basically it's just a series of these really short um, brush strokes with the larger brush pen. This is, or, I'm sorry, brush. This is a watercolor brush in a size eight. And so you're just doing these really short strokes um, and changing up the color. So this is more of an exercise in color than it really is in painting because you're only doing kind of one painting technique here. It's um, kind of a cone shape top for the tree and then these just short strokes that are going to mimic the branches coming off of a pine tree or Christmas tree. And as you're painting um, these trees it's important to keep an eye out for the negative space. So the negative space is just as important as where you're putting the color down. A negative space is where there's an absence of paint. So anywhere that you see white paper, that's the negative space. And it's important to show the different layers between the trees and you're gonna create um, the illusion of different branches by leaving white space in between some of your um, strokes. And I am varying um, the, the starting height and the size of the trees so that you get visually some different things to look at. Um, so this one I'm starting a little bit higher and making the color a little bit richer in that red color because again we're following that Roy G. Biv. So a little more red towards the top and then as you're coming down towards the center it's going to get a little bit more orangey and yellow. And then um, after we're done with these trees we'll transition to the cooler colors. And each layer actually flares out a little bit um, so that you can see they're not straight strokes. The ones in the center of the tree tend to be coming straight down and then the ones on the ends are flared out a little bit. And like I said, this is an exercise in color, so let your colors blend into each other. See how they um, look when you have them next to each other. I love the parts where like the top of the tree touches the next layer and it bleeds a little bit into it and I love seeing watercolor interact in that way so play with the colors and um, this will familiarize your, you a little bit with the palette as well if this is a brand new palette for you and what I want to achieve with this series is showing you that you know painting doesn't have to be very technical or very difficult like as you see this is kind of just scribbling but in paint form you know you're creating these zigzag lines um, and it's it's going to come together to come to create this really cool effect but it's not technically very difficult so i'm hoping that if there are any beginners out there that this series will help you uh, you know actually give painting a try and as you're um, choosing your next colors i do like to kind of cohesively tie everything together by incorporating some of the colors that I already used. So um, the colors that I, like the orange, the yellows that I already used, I'm blending it back into the greens to create that light green color. And then I'm blending that green in with a little bit of blue to get that subsequent color so that in terms of your colors, they're kind of in the same family and that makes it go really well together as a whole piece later on. 
I say we're varying the size, change up the heights of the trees, but also change up like how wide some of them will be. You can have a tall and skinny one, a shorter one. Um, they don't have to always have four layers. Um, the smaller trees can have three. It's just really um, a very loose style, which is easy for people who are you know, just learning because it gives you a lot of flexibility and leeway in terms of making mistakes and kind of exploring if you haven't um, really done any painting before. And the thing I really love about this Stella Rowney Aquafine set is how beautifully vibrant the colors are, but you still get that really great translucent quality of a really high quality um, watercolor. So um, as you're painting, you know, you can create such a, like so many different kinds of combinations of colors. I went with a very bright scheme, but if you were feeling like you wanted to create something a little moodier, you could incorporate a little bit of Payne's Gray into each color and that'll give you kind of a different feel. I wanted very bright, a little pastel, and definitely like you get rainbow vibes from this. So I went with mostly the true colors as they are and then I mixed them with each other. So I kind of tried to incorporate a little bit of that top layer with that second layer. I just added a darker, deeper shade of blue into there. And then I'll just mix a little bit of that blue with some of that purple to get a, um, a, a bluish purple for that following layer. And that's how you tie your colors in together. Um, but this palette comes with so many beautiful colors that it's really easy to do. I guess there's something you said about, um, you know, fine art supplies versus like beginner quality art supplies um, some of the things that I've noticed is that yes you know it may be a little bit more expensive but you're really paying for a difference in quality so if you're using paints that are um, you know on the less expensive side you won't get these blends as well or the colors will be a little murky and they won't be as like clear and, and bright so I mean you get what you pay for and I honestly when I was beginning I didn't want to invest in higher quality supplies but it really makes a difference so if this is something that you really want to develop a skill for I think that um, having really good brushes really good paper and really good um, you know watercolors will make a huge difference and I kind of freestyled it but I knew I wanted to leave a message on the bottom like I mentioned in the previous lessons these paintings would make a really cute sweet gift um, also some great home decor so you can gift this as well by putting a family name on the bottom um, you know welcome to the home of or you know oh Christmas tree was also a, a saying that I toyed with but I wanted to write home for the holidays and I did that with um, my pencil first and I'm now using using a kneaded eraser, which is a great, wonderful tool for watercoloring to lift most of that um, uh, pencil off. So it is visible to me while I'm painting and it acts as a guide as I'm painting, but in the final piece and on this video, it's very difficult to see that. Um, but I love the ne that the kneaded eraser kind of lets you hide the fact that you sketched it out ahead of time. And I'll be doing some brush calligraphy here for the first word so you'll notice that I'm trying to keep my downstrokes a little bit thicker than the upstrokes which is right there I try to keep it fine so you want to use very light pressure when you're um, painting your upstrokes and then more pressure so push down on the um, paintbrush itself so that more of that brush makes contact with the paper um, as you're as you're doing this calligraphy and I'll show it again with the M. You'll see that coming down this stroke is gonna be a thick line. And then now a thin line moving up, down, is gonna to transition to a thicker line. And you're gonna start again with the very thin upstroke and then the, the darker, um, thicker downstroke. And for the um, rest of the words, I'm just gonna use um, the size three brush for this. Um, I used the size three brush earlier too, but the great thing about round brushes is you get, you can get a lot of fine details, but you also can um, get some thicker strokes with that. So, so a round brush is very versatile, and if you're going to get any brush, get a round brush for watercoloring. Um, as you can see, I obviously pulled too much water onto my brush when I'm lettering. So you want to have very little water, and that's going to let you have the very, very fine detailed strokes for this lettering 
Um, so very little water on your brush and if you pull too much water obviously keep some um, paper towels close by so that you can lift some of that excess water off. And I'll say this lettering part is probably the hardest part of this project because it does require you to be pretty precise. The trees have that very loose style where you're just kind of doing this zigzag motion, but here you're actually having to write down tiny letters. Um, so if you are not ready to write in very small, very detailed, um, just choose maybe a larger and shorter phrase um, or, or save a larger area for your lettering. I just saved this tiny little corner, so I'm working with what I got. So when you're doing lettering like this, you want just the very tip of your brush to touch the paper and that's going to require a very gentle touch and very um, short strokes and just a lot of patience. So you can see the S, the curvature of that very tiny S, just um, I messed that up but I did want to show you errors so that you know how to fix it when it happens to you. So try to dot out that water um, try to dot out the paint as soon as you can with a wet paper towel and then with a clean um, paper towel and clean water you're gonna go ahead and dip that in and then try to just smudge it out and don't attempt repainting it until that has completely dried if your paper is wet that excess paint that you put on will just smudge and, and kind of bleed out so you want to make sure your paper is entirely dry before you attempt to fix it and at this point you can be done with your piece if you're happy with it you can choose to add in smaller trees to fill out the space or you can add on excess decorations like i am doing i'm just adding tiny little stars to the top of each tree um, just in case anyone wasn't clear that it's a christmas tree i'm gonna put a matching star on the top so whatever color is on that top of the tree i'm kind of just choosing um, a corresponding and matching color to go on top of that ideas that I toyed with but ch ultimately chose not to do was you can choose to add stems um, or not stems I'm sorry a trunk to the end of the bottoms of each tree um, I toyed with the idea of making it like a metallic gold or um, just consistent with the color motif as, as we had it um, but in the end I chose to just leave them kind of like floating trees um, you can also add, you know, ornaments or um, baubles to each tree. I decided to kind of, um, I'll show you in a little bit, dot it with a little bit of like snow just to kind of add a little bit of extra um, to it. I'm just going on over these trees with a little bit of that white paint just to add a little bit of splatter. You can choose to dot in like I'm doing or... Um, like wet your pen a little bit and create some splatter and that just kind of creates some fun um, detailings on the tree. this is pretty much it for how I'm gonna be decorating these trees you can feel free to go as ornate or as simple as you'd like but the beauty of having this watercolor paper cut to an 8 by 10 size is that now it's perfect for framing so if you have an entryway that you'd like to decorate with some artwork um, this is some like really great paper to do that with it frames beautifully um, and you have things that you can leave to welcome your guests and that's pretty much it for this tutorial I hope you guys got something from this project and I hope to see some of you guys painting little happy rainbow trees so if you do please tag me I'd love to see your artwork and if you have any questions just let me know